since I just got home. There's no electricity. Guys, I just got home to Kiev, and as you can see, there is no electricity. This is going to be a very interesting the next couple of months. Luckily, it's daylight and my apartment gets a lot of natural light. So in this room is fine, except there's no electricity. So obviously <laughs> this would be useless. But uh, I have light and actually it's relatively warm here even though this window's open. And see all this stuff. Well, at least the building's heat is still working, but this is going to be very interesting, guys. I knew that there was a chance. I knew that there was no electricity in Kiev. Uh, let's just see how it goes. Let's see if I end up regretting this decision to come home or not. So far. gonna have to make do with uh, exploring the house <laughs> by candlelight I guess and the biggest problem is the sun sets at uh, 4 p.m. every day so it's, it's bright now but who knows how long, how long that's gonna last you guys I'm so lucky Oh wait, that's a battery, fuck. <laughs> nope, still doesn't work. I was excited, I thought the power came back on, but I realized, no, fuck. Still off. I realized I had battery powered uh, night lights. These are life changer. This kind of sums up the status of situation here guys. How uh store keep their lights on guys. People eating in the dark. There is a little bit of light, but just the sun rims. guys it's 3 p.m i've been back in kiev for three and a half hours i got electricity back but now there's a massive missile attack it's scary times guys it's scary times fucking russia russia just leave us the fuck alone ukraine doesn't need you they don't want you Get the fuck out. Stop terrorizing us. The war in Ukraine intensifying overnight as a barrage of nearly 100 Russian missiles struck several regions across the nation, including the capital city of Kyiv. This is now the highest number of missiles launched in a single day since the start of the full-scale invasion. Kyiv's mayor saying two residential buildings were hit while several other missiles were shot down by Ukraine's air defense. All of this coming after Ukraine's President Zelensky addressed global leaders at the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, condemning Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion. Uh, Ukraine, of course, wants proper investigations into the tens of thousands of war crimes perpetrated by Russian soldiers in this country. And only hours after that speech at the G20, Russia launches this barrage of missile strikes 
drone strikes across this country. I mean, we went just a couple of days ago, a few days ago, to a power plant. We can't tell you exactly where in Ukraine, but we saw for ourselves what Russian missiles are doing to power plants in this country, destroying them. And even then, before this latest barrage, we were told by the energy company that the grid, the energy grid here in Ukraine, is, was already in a critical state. You know, there, there were already rolling blackouts in this city and across the country. Tonight, that critical state has got much worse. Kira. Morning, guys. It's day uh, two. The next morning, as you can see, limited light. This is my battery-powered LEDs. Uh, but it's 7 a.m. and the sun is coming up. And we have until 4 p.m. of sunlight here, so I'll make the most of it. So if you remember this, I bought this in Athens and Greece. This has actually been very helpful because without this, uh, it'd be okay here, but pretty dark. But I do have these battery-powered motion detector LEDs. I suppose to turn on for the show. I've had those actually before the uh, before the war started. And here it's really dark in this hallway and bathroom, but luckily I have one more of those here to kind of light up the living room. I mean, the, uh, the hallway here. And my living room, it's pretty bright because I have these two big windows as well. So even though I would rather just stay home and do my, my work, the Wi-Fi doesn't work when there's no power. Uh, and the 3G, 4G, becomes very spotty when there's no power. I think maybe because the cell tower is nearby, um, just don't have enough juice. So I'm gonna try to find a cafe. Well, you can see there's a lot of people outside. Traffic is working, so that's a good sign. One of my old favorite cafes is actually just on the corner there. It doesn't look open from here, but let's go check. This is one of the green building on that corner. This is one of the dimly lit underground tunnels we need to walk here. You can see a few built, few offices have some type of light, but that's uh, definitely some kind of generated or battery powered. This is all black. That's a reflection off of a, a screen somewhere. And almost none of these have any actual power, except the very first building on the corner for some weird reason. Those two or three shops have power, but everything else is just completely shut and black. All right, without even going into this dark creepy tunnel, I can already tell, unfortunately, it's completely dark. So I mean, it's, it's either shut or without power or both. So let's try to find something else. I think the sign reminds us what to do in these times. It looks like Milk Bar might open in 15 minutes. And it looks like they have some power at least, so I might hang out here until it opens. Oh, I'm happy you're open, don't you? Right <laughs> <laughs> I have a little electric. Uh, do you want breakfast? Yes. yes. I'll say miss him. Welcome back to Kiev, guys. Welcome back to Ukraine. All 
I'm just doing a little shopping here. You can see this place is super crowded. I think it's because there's an air raid, so everyone wants to be downstairs in the basement. And it's one of the only thing that's open, so it's kind of like a social place to gather now too. Uh -huh. So we're out of power again. It's about 12 o'clock noon and the schedule that I was super excited thinking, yeah, I can do this. You know, I can plan my day around the schedule, the, the, the power cuts. Uh, it, it, yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's supposed to, it was scheduled for 3 p.m. But three hours early, we're out of power. I was in the middle of doing laundry and in the middle of cooking, actually. I'm just going to say that this is funny. This is, this is a ring light for selfies. Yeah. For like vloggers and stuff. And now it's used for like power outages because it's probably USB powered. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Um... All right. Tell by the generators that the power is still out. And I've been gone for many, many, many hours. So it looks like there's power on the other side of the street. These uh, beautiful candlelight dinners people are having inside here. So it's, it's dinner time. I'm starving. I had this pot of chicken soup that's about halfway cooked. <laughs> Luckily, I turned it off before I left because I've been gone for like four hours. I definitely don't want the house to burn down. But uh, let's hope this stove works without power. I'm guessing this will be an electric ignition, which means I probably won't be able to to turn it on like this. But it sounds like there's gas, which is good. It should just be in. That should do the trick. Oh. Voila. Who needs electricity, guys, when you have gas? I'm curious if this oven will work, actually. Not that I need to bake anything. No, there's no way this will work. No, I think the oven will not work. It's probably an electric oven. But this works. That's the probably the most important. But just in case the gas goes out, I did buy these gel things. Let's try it out, actually. You will notice that I didn't buy a stove. I don't know if they didn't have any, or I just couldn't find them at Epicenter. And to be honest, I didn't ask. Because I was like, you know what? If anything, I'll buy one at Decathlon, like a, a proper camping one, which I can use for camping. But I bought these gel things just in case. I figure this is the most important part. The rest I can probably MacGyver. So let's try it. I don't want to open it, because... I don't want to waste uh, one of these gel things. I don't know how long they last once you open it. But can I just put something over that? I will not. I mean, maybe the fire might be too big, but I can raise it a bit. Why do I need a camp stove? Someone please tell me in the comments. Like, I, I'm very curious and I don't want to waste one of these because I might need it. But in my mind, it seems pretty simple. This is probably gel inside. It says like alcohol based, I don't know, something. I'm assuming I just light this with a lighter and it'll be a flame. And then I just put something over it. Well, you guys can't have it too close, like right on top, because then it'll kill the fire, right? If I did that, it would just kill the fire. But if I put this over it, just so has enough room for air, it should work, right? So please let me know. I might buy comes camp stove anyways, just in case, but. This should work, right? I'm just glad this is working because I'm starving. Speaking of which, this thing has been a lifesaver. I'm so happy I have this. I have this 20,000 milliamp, and I also have a smaller one, 10,000, as a backup. And these lights work very well, it's good as well. I don't even need two. Let's see if the battery goes. I just hate that it cycles through that fucking strobe every time and gives me a Headache. I wish that that was a separate option, but can't complain, guys. I don't have light there, but I'm right here. All right, guys, the soup is done. 
Nice little chicken soup with some fresh herbs, garlic, onion, some carrots, and a whole chicken cooked without electricity. So guys, I want to show you my fridge, my walk-in fridge. Since we have no power, I can't put this in my actual fridge, but on the balcony, here's my uh, chicken soup. So the temperature outside right now is uh, probably close to zero, and the high is gonna be plus two, which is basically freezing. Uh, so it's basically a free, not even a fridge, it's a freezer, because it gets to negative six here. So uh, I'm gonna be putting a lot of my food out here instead of in the fridge, just so I won't go bad. Good morning, guys. It's our first a little bit of snow overnight. How amazing is that? So I'm sure my chicken soup is fine because it's probably frozen solid. But how amazing is that, guys? First day of snow. Just a little bit right now, though. There'll be more to come. Cannot wait for my soup to be ready. Feels like it takes so long to boil from freezing. That makes make sense. And found a heat efficient way to warm my bread. So I'm using uh, something separate. Meanwhile, so it looks like outside. This so. now. Uh, before I go home, I'm going to my favorite Zatabata. Alright, well, I was so excited. I was just going to play some PlayStation. But as you can see, there's no power now. So, I wonder if I can sign into VR without internet. I don't know if it's possible. Let's try. This is to charge it up. I had to say it one hand, but hey, worse offline. I'm so excited. Yeah. I have no jab. I have no jab. You know what? Guys, I'm so happy. VR works offline. Throw the fight. Alright guys, I just got done playing a couple rounds of Throw the Fight, and you'll never guess the second game, it was Beat Saber. It was even so hot I had to open the window a bit. I'm gonna close it again. Being able to play VR offline has really changed things. Like, screw the PS4. I can just play. I can get into virtual reality. If it is dark, it's awesome. Meta Quest 2 for the win. So, guys, I'm going to try to take a shower with no power. Let's see if this even turns on. Oh, luxury. It works, guys. And technically, it's even better than showering in, in Europe because I was taking cold showers there. But here, I have hot water. Hi, it's Apoco. As you can see, I have electricity. And I've actually had electricity all morning, which I am shocked. It's been the first day since I've been back in Kyiv that I've actually had electricity the whole morning. I've been able to make a couple coffees, do some work, charge my laptop. It's like you, you almost kind of mm, don't appreciate things like having running electricity when you know you live somewhere stable. But here, 
I am so thankful. So I'm gonna try to cook some breakfast and maybe watch a little TV on the big screen before it runs out because even though I can watch it on my phone, it's, uh, it's nicer over there. I even try not to open my fridge when there's no power just because things uh, you know, can go bad faster. I think it's okay. I don't know how good this fish is though. But let's have a, yeah, a couple brekkies. Unfortunately, you always have to smell everything before you're cooking because you have no idea if it went bad in the fridge or not. The snow tab is working. Okay. Over the bottom. <laughs> guys literally like one minute later the power went out so luckily my water just finished boiling literally just finished boiling uh the stove is on i guess that's so fine but i won't be able to watch the uh you know tv but it's okay i have a few things downloaded on my phone i'm gonna finish cooking Life in Kiev, guys. Life under Russian attacks on infrastructure. President Zelensky says more than 10 million Ukrainians are without power after Russia's latest missile attacks on energy infrastructure. Many people are also facing disruption to drinking water supplies. Russia's latest missile strikes hit targets, including gas fields, industrial infrastructure and residential buildings. Ukraine is still trying to assess the damage from yesterday's widespread nationwide missile strikes across Ukraine. We understand in the city of Zaporizhia, the Zaporizhia region, officials say seven people there died when a missile hit a residential building. In Dnipro city, uh, missiles hit an industrial plant and uh, 14 people were injured, including a teenage girl. But the wider impact, looking more broadly at Ukraine, has been the the impacts on energy supplies. We understand that there were strikes on gas facilities in the eastern part of Ukraine. In the southern city of Nikopol, thousands of homes were knocked off the power grid following um, strikes by Russia. I'm speaking to you from Kiev, and here one of the electricity companies said the capital experienced one of its biggest energy shutdowns because of these strikes. It's minus three degrees here in Kiev, and this would be a big concern for families who are right now trying to stay warm um, and, and get some electricity into their homes. Yeah, and it was only this time yesterday that we were looking at live pictures of the first snowfall of the winter there in Kiev, Catherine. I mean, it's not just the power, is it? It's also water facilities and a real threat to the availability of drinking water for people. It's just so basic. Oh God, how crazy is that, guys? It's literally just like one minute later. I'm still cooking the, the ham, it's not even done yet. And the power just went out. So the water luckily just finished boiling. So I have hot water there. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to watch TV as I was hoping, but you know what, end of the day, it's not, not big of a deal. Uh, this is life under Russian invasion, uh, under Russian attacks in uh, the city center of Kiev. It's snowing outside, but at least we have some daylight until 4 p.m. By the, by the way, if you're wondering why I have two different types of eggs, I forgot which one has the better yolks. Try to guess. One has these kind of like pale yellow yolks. They're not bad, but these are way better. This is just like probably better quality um, fed chickens. And it's not the one with the orange yolk on it. So I have to remember to buy this one from now on. So you're probably also wondering if the water still works while the fishing's off. And good news. 
So it does. Uh, the first day, actually, it didn't work. And I realized it was because I have a system called an Ajax that has an automatic water cutoff. Just in case it's flooding or some kind of, you know, emergency. And the thing is, it has switched off before I left. Uh, and I couldn't switch it back on electronically because I had no power the first day. I think I can manually force it uh, under the sink, but I decided, you know what, let me just kind of wait for power to come back on. And now that it's back on, luckily, even during power cuts, I have water. I don't think that's the case for everyone in Ukraine because some people have electric pumps to get the water to their house. So then they're screwed. Structure, knocking out water to 80% of the capital at one point, leaving hundreds to line up with jugs and clearing out store shelves. Airstrikes are also repeatedly striking Ukraine's electrical systems, the source of heating as winter approaches. They want to freezing the whole population in our hometown. It's, it's genocide. It's no in other words. On the ground, as the cold deepens, there are worries about what winter will bring. I was born here, says Raisa. Where am I supposed to go? Civilians have long faced the collateral damage in this conflict. Increasingly now, they are the target. This gentleman here looks like he has a huge generator that he's uh, bringing out to his, uh, I think, the hair salon that he owns. So you can see you know, he's getting ready for the couple hours of uh, being without power. I, I know a lot of you told me to get a generator uh, or one of those um, power supplies, you know, that I use for kind of emergencies or uh, it's very popular in van life. But the generators you can actually buy here still, but I don't want to deal with, you know, using like petrol, diesel or gasoline and putting it on my balcony and running it. I don't need power that bad. If I really need it, I can just go somewhere and charge something. The power bags for me were enough. And also the actual uh, big kind of brick things, they're so heavy to carry that because I was coming by land, by train, it would have been too heavy to, to carry comfortably. Uh, I couldn't fly with it from Greece, obviously, so I'd have to have bought one in Moldova, which I don't think is that popular there. So I don't know, if one of these companies, one of these like Blue Yeti, whatever companies, are out there, ready power power supply companies wants to sponsor and send me uh, a couple of them. I'll be happy to try one for myself to see how it changes my life, but also to give one to someone who actually really needs it. Maybe send it down to a family that lives somewhere with no power at all um, or somewhere kind of closer to the front. Yesterday's wave of missile strikes caused further damage to a power grid that was already afflicted by previous Russian attacks. The new Russian strategy responds to losses on the battlefield with a targeting of gas, water and, above all, electrical infrastructure designed to harm millions of Ukrainians as winter's cold begins to bite. Before the uh, bombing yesterday, we had around 40% of uh, energy infrastructure damaged, uh, which is quite a lot. And uh, yesterday, uh, according to the information we have been 50 more uh, uh, energy objects damaged, which is uh, also very painful. We caught up this afternoon with Maria Karapata in Kiev. With no power at home, she'd gone elsewhere to work and indeed to speak to us. Right now I'm in the office of my friend because here right now I have um, electricity and for example at my home uh, it's impossible to work. <laughs> And uh, you're just every day trying to catch the light, to catch uh, the internet, uh, water, and so on, so on. And um, yes, if you talk about routine, uh, it's become, it becomes really difficult. The strikes yesterday hit infrastructure from Kiev in the north to Odessa down south, Kharkiv in the east to Lviv out west, and so many points in between. So if you know of anyone, if you guys want to sponsor, feel free to send it over, but you have to get it to Kiev somehow. I don't know how you do it. Maybe send it to someone in Poland, and then I can find a volunteer who's coming here anyways to pick it up, but I don't know. You could email me. Uh, or write me on Instagram or Twitter or something. 
but so far I haven't needed it. You know, I, I've been okay with just the power banks charging it up. Uh, I'm lucky that all my devices, including my my MacBook Air, as well as my iPhone, Bluetooth speakers, lights, they're all USB powered. Uh, I thought of, about this a lot when I was looking into van life, something I've always kind of dreamed of and might still do in the future. And I already decided, you know what? When I get all that, I'm not even gonna have an inverter because it uses so much power, it's not very efficient. I would actually just have everything on DC, which is like USB powered. Anyways, it looks like my breakfast is finally done. So I'm gonna sit down, see if I what I have downloaded. There's no internet now, there's no Wi-Fi. And enjoy. This is a suitable mug of uh, Earl Grey for the day. It's fucked up day, but Lord of Ukraine. So as for heating, you can see each one of my rooms has one of these things. Here's uh, another one. So the way it works is there's this like um, pipe that goes through here. I think the only place in the U.S. I've seen this is in New York. And what it is, it's hot water that flows through. And it's not just my building. Literally, it's connected with every building in all of Kiev. The, uh, this is the heating infrastructure that was built during the Soviet times where everything was kind of collective through the government anyways. And I don't know actually how efficient it is. Uh, actually, I'm so curious. If anyone has a good YouTube video, an article talking about if it's more or less efficient to heat a centrally connected heating system in the whole city or for everyone to have an individual heating system like we do in the US or most countries, Please let me know because that'd be really interesting. But this is what, what we have in Ukraine. And the pros and cons of it uh, is, I guess the, the, the good part is when it's on, it actually works very well. So as long as you have decent insulation and decent windows. My windows in this room are not the best because they're old, but you can see there's actually two windows here. So if I open this one up, actually I don't want to open the whole thing, but if I open this one up, there's another window there. So it actually is double layered and in my most of my other rooms i have these newer european style windows that actually have two layers of glass so in rooms like this it's super warm because no air comes in that room at all so once the inside of the house is heated uh it's gonna stay warm for a long time and because every single house every single apartment has the same heating it heats the, the person above me and below me equally. So the whole center, regardless of where you live, uh, what your budget is, is the same. And you just pay by square footage. So my place is about 80 square feet or 80 square meters. And I have to pay X amount per square meter. Uh, I can get to that another day when I calculate that in the month. Uh, but basically the good news is once it's on it's on for everyone and when you go to any restaurant cafe shop it's on everywhere and it's the same temperature the downside of it is first you have to wait for them to turn it on so sometimes you have that shoulder season where it's cold but it's not cold enough i think their normal rating is it needs to be an average of five degrees uh, celsius uh for three days in a row and then they turn it on so that's normally middle of october until let's say March or something. Fears that this winter the utilities bills will grow exponentially prompted many Ukrainians to prepare for the heating season in advance. One changed radiators and another saved money all summer to pay invoices. <laughs> I saved in advance for utilities, as I'm a pensioner, and pension is so small that one will not survive on it. We changed radiators. Now we are waiting for the heating season start to check how warm it will be in the living room, where we've installed new radiators. We hope that the price will be normal, not some 50 or 40 hryvnias, but a reasonable price. The other downside of it is, regardless if you're actually using it or not, you have to pay for it. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't feel back, bad about coming back, is I knew that my apartment would be heated regardless if I was here or not. And that's by far the biggest utility usage. Like there's no way for me to just turn it off. Uh, it's just on. So I can limit the amount of water I use or electricity I use, but you can't limit the heat. 
And actually, there's no way for them to turn it down. When they built it, they built it as basically an on-off as a minimum. So the minimum is around 20, 19 to 22 degrees. And that's for everybody. Some people's apartments are a lot warmer just because they have better insulation or the building or it's, um, you know, it's closer to the, the plant or the city center. And then some people who live in the outskirts, maybe their place is a bit colder, mostly because of bad insulation or bad kind of building or just it's far away. My place is actually very warm. Um, I'm very lucky, but we don't know how long that's gonna last, especially with the continued attacks by Russia, who's trying to lock it down. So instead of me trying to explain it, I'll have Dennis DeMori explain it. This is one of the channels that I follow very often. This morning, again, Russia launched their rockets to target Ukrainian critical infrastructure, and they destroy some of the power plants, causing blackout elsewhere, and especially in Kyiv, Odessa, Vinnytsia. We also had it today, and half of the day we usually don't have electricity, and just during the evening time we have it right now. But at any moment it may disappear. And it's the first time that Russia targeted the gas infrastructure of facilities that provide heating for civilians and also for our industrial factories. So basically they're destroying our economy, destroying our normal lives. And today the press secretary of Putin explained why they do so. By hitting critical Ukrainian infrastructure, we call Zelensky to negotiate. I think that what is Hitler thought during the World War II, he bombed London and UK from 1939 till 1945. So so, if you guys want to check out the channel, it's uh, Dennis DeMori, very cool guy. So, as you can see, right now we're lucky that we do have heating, but it's not guaranteed to last. I prepared for it, I have plenty of winter clothes, you know, warm clothes, and I figure if the heating does go out, I'll be able to survive in here for at least a week before it gets really, really cold, as long as I don't open windows. Um, but if the heating goes out eventually, It'll be like camping indoors. And I'll have to figure out what to do then. Uh, you know, being without, I guess it's a thought experiment. Would you rather be without heating during the winter when it's minus outside, without electricity, or without running water? And that's a, it's a tough situation. Comment below, let me know which one you would rather have only half the day, uh, but you could have the other half the day. And which one would you be able to survive without for one week? I think for me, in this case, the running water is actually the most important. Even though I have backup water, if I'm not able to flush, if I'm not able to actually, um, you know, I, sh I don't need to take showers as much, but really just sewage. I think that's one of the most important things. If we can't flush toilets, uh, for over, you know, a few days or a week, that becomes a big problem. The electricity, if we're without it for more than a day, it gets it becomes harder because if, as long as we have it for a few hours a day, we can charge up our power banks and everything. But if it goes for more than 72 hours, then we're screwed. And heating, kind of the same thing where, I guess if we have electricity, we can heat another way. I could have heated floors, I have mini splits. But, you know, I don't want to waste electricity using that. And if everybody starts using it because the heating is out, then we're also screwed. So it's a tough situation, guys. It really is. Especially as winter is getting colder and colder. You can already see the ice in my car. For civilians and also for our industrial factories. So basically they're destroying our economy, destroying our normal lives and today the press secretary of putin explained why they do so so i was able to watch dennis's uh, update but then that's it and the internet's out now including the 4g lte even 3g oh that's one thing i didn't really factor in um i knew that the wi-fi would turn off when there was power and i was kind of hoping that mobile would still work like a hotspot but for some reason, it's all connected together. So when the power goes out, usually within 20 minutes, the mobile power goes out as well. Maybe they have like a 20, like a 20 minutes um, UPC or APC where 
it keeps it on. But now it's on <clears throat> like Bali 3G circa 2014, where it's terribly slow and very spotty. So you can kind of send messages, um, you know, every five or 10 minutes. Uh, but yeah, don't count on trying to watch a video or uh, really do anything. So now I'm in the dark without internet. I do have my power bank and uh, yeah, stuff a few hours of daylight. Now I'm just hoping that this water is so hot enough to make another cup of tea, which uh, hopefully it should be. I don't know if I never noticed them earlier or if they weren't there, but there's a bird. It's like a really cute bird here. Can you see it?